After my recent positive review of the BQ Cryo Group build plates for the A1 Mini, BQ was kind enough to send me their X1C versions of the Cryo Group build plates so I could test them on a larger build area. So they sent me both the Glacier and Frostbite versions and you can see the size difference between the A1 Mini and the X1C versions here. These build plates are super easy to install, simply take out the existing build plate and drop in the new one. But it's not really obvious on how to actually set up the slicer correctly to make use of them. So the point of this video is to create a how-to guide on correctly using them in Bamboo Studio. So stick around and I'll guide you through this process. Before we continue, I'd like to just give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, which is PCBWay. If you're looking to bring your project to the next level and do things like custom PCB work, 3D printing and exotic materials such as metal, CNC machining and sheet metal work, PCBWay is the place to go for all those needs. Their website is super simple to use. You can simply upload your project and get an instant quote. Prices are fair and best of all, you can do small order quantities. This way, the next time you're working on a project, you don't have to worry about scaling out and doing thousands of pieces just to get that prototype done. You can talk to PCBWay and get that custom prototype that you need with minimum order quantities. So thank you to PCBWay for their continued support of the channel and let's continue with the video. All right, now to use these cryo grip plates, there are some settings you need to do in Bamboo Studio so that they actually work because the point of these plates is that you can lower the temperature down and therefore consume less power and get that adhesive properties that the plates have inside them. Now, depending on the plate you're using, either the Frostbite or the Glacier is going to depend on what settings you want to apply. You should get a sheet, which I'll show you on screen now, which has the details for these plates and recommended settings and their recommended filaments. As we saw before, I actually installed the Glacier plate, so that's what we're going to be printing on, but I'll also show you how to set up the Frostbite as well, and then you'll be able to save these settings so you can switch between them. So let's go about setting up the Glacier, and there's two things we need to cover here. First is selecting the build plate. So by default, it's probably going to be selected selected as smooth PEI plate or textured PEI plate. And I think textured is actually what they send by default now, but you can get different options. So it's probably going to be set to something like this out of the box. The way we want to control the build plate temperature is through two things, this build plate selection and also the temperature settings inside our filament selection. So the first thing is we want to always change our build plate to the bamboo cool plate soup. And this is basically telling the slicer that we want to use the properties of the bamboo cool plate super tack settings for our print. So where are those settings? Well, like I just said, it is built into our material or our filament. So here you'll have all your default ones. And if you synchronize your AMS or your or synchronize back to your printer, it's going to bring the through those settings anyway. So here's what I've got loaded because I've got two AMS systems and it's currently set to my Bamboo Lab X1. But we actually want to change that. So these little uh, lids are all set to number four PLA basic, but I actually want to change that. And here we'll have some user custom presets. What you want to do is you actually want to click on this little three dot edit menu, and then we can go to edit. And when you look through the settings here, you'll see our print temperatures and lo and behold, bamboo cool plate super tack. So this is where we set our initial layer temperature and every other layer temperature after that. And you can also see the temperature settings for everything else. And this is based on PLA basic because we've opened up the properties for that. I am using a PLA basic, so you'll want to make sure it's matching. So I recommend first picking that bamboo preset and then editing and saving is basically what we're doing here. So what we can do is I want to call this Bamboo PLA Basic and we can click on the save button and I'm going to get rid of that and say Glacier. 
because I'm going to set up the properties for the glazier. And here you either has as a user preset, so it's kind of like a global setting for every project you do, or preset inside projects, so it could be settings just related to this particular file. But we want it to be a global setting, so we don't always have to change it. So we can go, okay. So now we've got our own custom setting for Bamboo PLA Play Basic for the Glacier. So if we go back here, I can actually change that to custom PLA Basic Glacier. So now we have our own setting here. And the other thing we need to do, of course, is edit that temperature setting. So if we go back into the edit settings, and we want to change here. So for the Glacier, it says for PLA, we can play with a range between 45 to 55 degrees Celsius. And I was playing around with 45, that seems to work fine. And that's what it is by default for the Cool Plate Super Tech. So that is all good, we can just close that. Now let's also make a preset for our frost blight, which is going to be a little bit lower. So what we can do is again, we can go back to edit, and we can simply save another version and I'm going to call this Frostbite. And we go, okay, making sure user preset is selected. And this time we want to drop that down to, it recommends for the Frostbite for PLA, we can go right down to 30 degrees Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius. I found 30 was a little bit too low, so I'm actually gonna go 35. And I recommend just playing around because it's going to depend on things like your climate and etc. So start from the minimum and just work your way up if you're having adhesion issues. Basically, temperature is controlling the adhesion of the build plate. So the higher you go, the better it's going to adhere. But the point is we want to try and find that middle ground where we can lower the temperature as much as we can while still getting good adhesion. So in my case, I found 35 was good for the frostbite using PLA. And now we can just save that. OK, and there we go. If I was using the frostbite plate, I would select all my parts that I'm printing. So you don't want to just select one because they're going to have different filament properties. So we can go control A. I've got a whole bunch here, so I'm selecting them all. I'm going to go to custom and frostbite. And also that's controlled into our build plate, build plate selection, which is this one, making sure that cool plate super tack is selected. You can't create your own build plate. So we're just going to kind of piggyback off these default settings and adjust for these cryo grip build plates. Now, in my case, as you saw before, we have the Glacier installed. We're going to use that for printing this job. So I'm going to change that and we're going to go to Glacier. So just double checking the settings, you can see it's 45 degrees, which is the recommended of 45 to 55 degrees. And I've been using 45 degrees for my Glacier plate on the A1 Mini, and it's been fine. In this case, we're going to test the build plate on the X1C. It's a bit bigger, but I trust that it's still going to work at 45 degrees. So we'll see what happens. And in my case, I want to make sure that that if the machine runs out of filament, it's going to continue into the next spool available and those spools need a match. So I'm going to set number six to also the same thing, which is Glacier. Unfortunately, the color doesn't transfer along with these filaments. So if you wanna kind of just match what is actually in your system, you could change this to a red or whatever it actually is. In my case, it is black, so it's fine. And changing the color isn't going to change those temperature properties that we set before. So that's it, making sure you create a custom, selecting it, and then also making sure that your cool plate super tack is selected. And then we can slice that plate and then we're going to print that plate. So we got our X1C selected. Time lapse and flow dynamics I don't care for. Auto bed is on and we can send that. Now one more thing I want to show you is these settings, these custom presets are actually tied to the type of printer that we're creating that filament preset for. So as you can see, it's PLA basic for the X1C. But if I was to change this to my A1 mini and then going to my custom presets, you can see I've actually created different ones, but we've lost all those other custom presets that I created earlier. So it is tied and I'll have to play around with this a bit more. Maybe it's in our system presets or something, but yeah, just be aware that if you have multiple types of printers, like an A1 mini, an A1, P1S, X1C, all that stuff, it's probably going to be tied to the type of printer that you're selecting. 
hopefully there's some more global setting that I can control so it just works on all printers but it does make sense it is particular to that printer I suppose because they are different potentially uh, build plate size and dimensions and such so anyway that's sent off for printing now let's see how it compares to my worn out PEI plate that I showed you before once that print is complete and then we'll continue from there I've been working on a customer project lately, so I thought this would be a good example of the build plate and testing its adhesion. And as you can see, these held on really well. They're not budging, it feels really secure. But with just a little bit of pressure and folding that build plate, they start to pop right off. It is mentioned in the instructions that if you do have difficulty removing parts, then try putting the build plate in the freezer and allowing it to cool right down, and then they should pop off. You don't want to force parts off because you may risk damage to the surface material. So here I have two examples. The one on the right was what I printed on my old PEI build plate, which was quite worn. And you can see some surface imperfections here. And then the one on the left is the new CryoGrip build plate. You can see it has a much uniform surface finish. Another important point is the one on the left with the new build plate is nice and flat, whereas the old one has this real sloped deformity to it. And that's likely being caused by adhesion issues. Now it's time for some energy testing. First I took a temperature and power reading of just an idle X1C system and you can see it's sitting at 23 degrees Celsius It basically draws 10 watts of power. I then started a print and this is on the old PEI sheet and we can see it draws between 170 to 110 watts and the temperature of the build plate is around 50 degrees Celsius. Now that we have some baseline measurements, I'm swapping over to the Glacier build plate. With this plate, you can drop the temperature down to about 45 to 55 degrees. And we can see straight away a reduction in that power draw and it's sitting around 60 to 90 watts. If we check the temperature of the build plate, you can see it is sitting at 45 degrees. And now for the final test, which is the Frostbite plate. And this one we can drop down to 35 degrees for PLA which you can see the power drawer has dropped right down now to almost 55 watts and the temperature reading is only 33 degrees. The final thing I wanted to look at is the surface finish between the Glacier and the Frostbite build plates because they do have a different finish to them. So once I remove the test subject from both plates, you can really see the difference side by side, especially as the light catches it. So the one on the left is the Glacier and it has kind of like a smooth textured finish, whereas the one on the right is the Frostbite. And you can see it has this super smooth, glossy finish that really catches in the light. It's hard to describe. You really got to see this one in person. Almost like a, a plasticky feeling, even though it is plastic. It's quite weird. I think you could really do some cool effects with like lids and such for containers with these two surface finishes. So overall, as usual, I'm really impressed with these BQ products. I think these build plates are a must have. It really helps with your printing, not having to worry about adhesion issues all the time, which I was starting to face with that really old PEI plate that I've been using for so long. The other positive is that you can bring that temperature down and you can actually save a bit on your power bill, especially if you have multiple machines. If you're at all interested in picking up some of these build plates for your machine, check out my affiliate link in the description of the video as it will really help support the channel. Well, I hope you found value in this video. If you have, support the channel by subscribing to it and thanks for watching.